Hey everybody, how's it going? Today we're going to be going over and showing you how to install the Kurt Trailer Hitch Receiver here on our 2016 Mercedes-Benz GLA. So this is what our trailer hitch is going to look like installed on our vehicle here. Now it does have a hidden cross tube, meaning the cross tube is going to be tucked back behind the bumper, so the only thing we actually can see is a receiver tube. This is going to give us the best possible ground clearance, and it's going to make for the best overall appearance since the receiver tube is just tucked up behind the bumper here. Now our trailer hitch does have a black powder coated finish which is going to do a great job of helping protect the hitch from rust being that it is on the outside of the vehicle. So adding a trailer hitch to your GLA it's going to be an excellent option because it's going to make your vehicle that much more versatile. Now we can obviously use a trailer hitch for towing but if we wanted to free up some space inside the vehicle for us and the family on those long road trips or if we just wanted to hit the trails we could easily attach either a hitch mounted bike rack or hitch mounted cargo carrier. Now in regards to towing, our trailer hitch is going to provide us with a 4,000 pound gross trailer weight rating. That's the amount we can pull outward on the receiver. It also has a 600 pound tongue weight rating. That's the downward force on the receiver. Now keep in mind, these capacities are for the hitch only, which is tested separately of the vehicle. Therefore, you do need to verify your vehicle's towing capacity in your owner's manual and abide by the lower of the two rated components, whether that's the vehicle or the hitch. Now our trailer hitch does have a two inch by two inch industry standard receiver tube opening. That's gonna make for the greatest variety of those hitch mounted accessories to choose from, such as ball mounts, bike racks, or cargo carriers. Now on the side of our receiver tube, we're gonna have our industry standard 5 8 inch diameter hitch pin hole. It's gonna work great with our 5 8 inch diameter hitch pin and clip. Keep in mind, this does not come with uh, and the reason for that is a lot of your hitch mounted accessories such as bike racks and cargo carriers are actually going to come with their own so you shouldn't need to worry about picking this up separately but if you do need one we have plenty of options and then welded to the bottom of the receiver tube we have our safety chain loops those work great with both the smaller s type here as well as the larger clevis style so now a couple measurements for you that are going to help you when you're selecting your hitch mounted accessories the first one is the distance from the ground to the top inside edge of the receiver tube you're looking at about 13 inches and that'll be useful when you're selecting a ball mount that way you can make sure you get the correct rise and drop to tow your trailer level and then we have the distance from the center of the hitch pin hole to the outside edge of the bumper you're looking at about four inches and that's going to be useful when you're selecting your folding accessories that way you can make sure that while they're in the stowed and folded up position they don't contact the vehicle so in regards to installation it's really not that bad we do have to remove the rear bumper cover and I know that may seem like a challenging task but once you get in there and get started it's really pretty easy. We'll actually walk you through the entire process so you guys shouldn't have any issues with that. Now in regards to tools needed, pretty much just common hand tools. Um, there is one tool you're going to need you might not have, that's a torque wrench. You can actually rent this for free though from most local auto parts stores. In regards to modifying the vehicle, this is very minor. We just have to trim the heat shield underneath just slightly, but aside from that, everything's pretty much factory. Let's go ahead and walk you through this now. So the first step of our installation, we need to remove our exhaust tip. So there's one on either side. They're held in place with these two torque screws, which we remove using a T40 Torx bit. So if yours doesn't come right out, there are some keep your tabs here at the top. So you'll just have to sort of slide back towards the front of the vehicle and sort of angle it out. So now we need to remove an exhaust hanger bracket here on the bottom of our frame. So this is actually a, you're gonna need a reverse Torx bit for this. Um, we actually don't have one of those and I'm sure you guys aren't either. So what you're gonna do instead is you're gonna take a 10 millimeter 12 point socket. You're gonna be very careful not to strip that fastener. So, this isn't technically the correct tool for this. Again, it's gonna be a reverse Torx bit, but those are pretty hard to come by. In a 12 point 10 millimeter socket, it's gonna be much more attainable for you guys. And as you can see, you can still get the fastener out there without damaging it. We have one of these on each side, we need to remove them both. Next, we need to come into the hatch here because we're going to be removing each of our tail light assemblies. Now, there's going to be a little cover slash knockout panel on either side. And once we remove that, there's going to be a plastic nut that you can actually get out by hand, located sort of in this passageway directly behind the tail lights. So they are kind of stubborn. You may need to get a pair of pliers to spin that. I believe there is a tool head on there as well. So you could get a flat blade screwdriver. It had to be a pretty small one because you don't have a lot of room, but I was able to get this one by hand and we're just going to spin this off like so and that's going to loosen up our tail light. 
So next we can go ahead and pull our taillight assemblies off the vehicle. So you may need a tool for this or you may be able to do it by hand, just depends on how much grip you have. Um, there's gonna be a little keeper on the side here and then a plunger over here. But now we're just gonna unplug our taillight assemblies there. There should be a tab on the back. You just depress that and pull out. Next, we're gonna take a 10 millimeter socket. We've got a couple bolts to remove. We're gonna have the same two bolts on the other side, but for this side here, there's just one right here, a little cutout in your heat shield. And then there's one over here on the edge of the bumper fascia. So let's go ahead and get those both out now and do that same thing on the other side. So next we're gonna take an eight millimeter sockets and we're gonna be removing all of these metal nuts here that are attaching our heat shield to the bottom of the vehicle. Now we're gonna be removing all the nuts to letting our heat shield drop down, but we're not actually removing the heat shield entirely. So there's gonna be several of these, make sure you get them all out. So now we're gonna to come to the outside of our wheel well here, sort of earlier when we remove this bolt, there's gonna be some other push pin fasteners on the bottom here that are attaching our bumper fascia to this fabric wheel well liner. So we need to go ahead and remove those. They're pretty easy to get out. We've got a couple on each side. We're just gonna take a flathead screwdriver, pry the center section of that fastener down, and the rest of it should pull out. So again, we got a couple on this side. We'll have these same ones on the other side. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna to come to the outside of our wheel well trim here. We're gonna begin prying back the clips here. So this is the part I'm talking about. We don't need to remove it, but I am gonna pry back this first couple sections here to release the clips. So you usually just take a plastic trim panel tool. You can sometimes get your fingers in there if you have fingernails. But we'll just begin prying those clips out as you can see here. So you can see we've got pulled back here. I think there's two, there's five clips there we undid. So we're just gonna do that on both sides. So next we're gonna come inside the wheel well here, just directly behind that fender liner we just pulled off. And there's gonna be a bolt on either side we need to remove with a 10 millimeter socket. It's kind of hard to see, kind of do most of it by feel. There we go, that's what that bolt looks like. So we're gonna have another push pin fastener inside here holding our wheel liner fabric to our bumper fascia. So we need to go ahead and remove that. And again, there's one on either side. Same thing as the ones you removed earlier. Just pry that center section out. And these can be a bit harder because they're just directly behind the rear wheels and there's all kinds of dirt and debris you're kicking up into them. So they're definitely a little bit more challenging to get out. And you may honestly break these ones up. That's fine, it's not a huge deal. You can usually get some fasteners similar that you can replace it with, or I'm sure the liner would probably stay on even without it. So yeah, I kind of think that one's gonna break on me here. I'm gonna switch over to another tool to see if we can get it out that way without breaking it off. So there we go, that did the trick there. I just took some needle nose and grabbed the shaft of that so I could pull it out. So now we can begin removing the rear bumper fascia. So you're gonna gently pull back on that fender trim piece here. There is some adhesive there, so you don't wanna pull back too far. Just enough to get your hand in there and release the clips there for the bumper. And then when you get up here to the tail light pocket, I recommend getting a plastic trim panel tool so you can sneak it under that black plastic piece and then you can pull out on the bumper just making sure we're not damaging any of those tabs there. So you can kind of see, this is the tab part. So there's gonna be a recess directly behind this and it's catching on that black part. So in order to just get this to release, you have to pry up that black part there or pry down that painted surface. So if you kind of look over here, you can see where that recess is and that's what's stopping us from pulling it back out. So we need to pry one up and the other down to release them. And they can kind of fight you a little bit. It's just kind of the nature of the game. But just take your time there and be careful because we really don't want to break any of these. So 
So I've got this side pretty much popped off. I'm gonna go to the other side, do that same thing, and then I'm gonna have someone help me and I'm gonna pull off the clips in the middle here. The center section here is kind of tricky because we have some more of those little fasteners that we showed you sort of in the taillight pocket. But basically, I just got my fingertips behind this part of the plastic there and I just pulled out and you can actually see the different little tabs there. So kind of tricky, just get your fingers in there, your fingertips in there as best you can and just sort of pry them out. So we do have some electrical connectors that we need to unplug first before we can remove this completely. Uh, it looks like we got one on each side. They should be the same though. Just go ahead and unmove these. So there's gonna be a little tab there on either side. It's kinda of hard to press with your fingertips so you may need to get a tool. But there's one there and there's one there. So we'll just go ahead and remove these on both sides. Now with our two electrical connectors removed, we'll go ahead and set our bumper fascia aside in a safe place so it doesn't get damaged. So now that we have our fascia off, we're gonna to come to our bumper beam here. Now we are gonna be removing our bumper beam in a second, but before we do that, we're gonna have some electrical fasteners here attached to the inside of the bumper beam. You wanna make sure that you pry out before we pull that off the vehicle. So next we need to remove our bumper beam. So the bumper beam is held on to studs. So there's actually studs on our bumper beam that go through the holes in the body and then there's nuts on the back side. So we're gonna take a 16 millimeter deep well socket. We're gonna have four nuts per side. So we're gonna come to the back side, remove all those and our bumper beam should pop off. So here is the two nuts on the outside of the frame here with our bumper beam. We're gonna have two on the inside and the same four on the other side. Now we're ready to remove our bumper beam from the vehicle. Now there is an adhesive there around the flanges. You'll just have to pull down to break that adhesive. Just sort of wiggle it back and forth to remove it completely. Now before we place our trailer hitch back onto the bumper with the vehicle, we need to take some RTV gasket. We need to place a good sized line around the opening of the frame. Just like that. Now we're gonna take our bumper beam here and place our trailer hitch over the studs on the bumper beam. Just like so. And then with an extra set of hands, we'll go ahead and set that onto the vehicle and secure it with our factory hardware. So now that we have our extra set of hands, we'll go ahead and set the hitch on the vehicle. So now that we have our hitch in place and our bumper beam back on, we'll go ahead and snug up all those factory nuts and then torque them to the specifications in your instructions. just removing the section around the hitch here to give you a little bit more clearance so again the instructions have some diagrams here that you can measure some exact points I really don't think it needs to be that detailed just remove a section here or similar and you should be fine so now we're gonna go ahead and reinstall everything on the vehicle that we removed previously make sure you bolt up the heat shield back into position then we'll throw our bumper on and finish securing the exhaust so now with everything back on the vehicle, that's gonna do it today for our look and installation of the Kurt Trailer Hitch Receiver here on our 2016 Mercedes-Benz GLA.